In Louisville, we experience a wide range of sudden severe weather. Tree limbs are starting to come down. The Ohio River. Several small. areas under a tornado warning. Downloading the WDRB weather app is a great way to track approaching storms on a real-time radar map. And for streaming on the go, get the WDRB News app where you can watch live news and weather coverage. Give every morning a fresh start with a Jimmy Dean Delights breakfast. They're chock full of protein and ingredients you want. From wraps to bowls to sandwiches, you'll never have the same old, same old again. We're delighted and hope you will try. You said that you would shave your eyebrow off oh. for a hashtag Klondike. Go, go. Oh! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what would you do for a Klondike? WDRB in the morning invites you to be our guest at Hinton Detail. This family-owned and operated business offers interior and exterior detailing, ceramic coating, and headlight restoration. Located in Clarksville, they provide professional services to deep clean and protect your vehicle. Thursday morning at 9, WDRB.com will offer $250 Hinton Detail gift certificates at half price, just $125. But don't wait, they're limited. Be our guest at Hinton Detail, another great value from WDRB.com. There's no one else. Um, I don't believe that. I don't care what you believe. Ooh. No, no. Nowhere. Stick to one woman. Ouch. No, no, no. There's no doubt. There's only one Judge Judy. Never lie to a judge when you're in court. It's a no-no. Judge Judy. Whoa. I'm getting you to smile. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 7 o'clock Judy. Weeknights on WDRB. Now on WDRB News. Boom, 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 boom. After that, stop. I pull my wife to the back. Two people killed, a woman taken hostage, and the suspect shot by police. The husband relives the moment the gunman took his wife. I said, let her go, get me. Another round of bills passing across Governor Bashir's desk. The two hot button school issues he vetoed, why they still may become law. We're not quite done with the cold season yet. Some temperatures 25 degrees below normal in the next seven days. And I want to dial in when snow showers are possible. Next. First to 10 tonight, small businesses in Louisville's trendy Nulu neighborhood bank on the out-of-town dollar. WDRB's Breon Martin shows us the race to welcome new customers and employees before horses break for the gates on Derby. The Nulu Business Association predicts new and large crowds of customers this Derby season. A month out from Derby, many businesses are trying to meet demands. You'll see hiring signs on doors and job postings online. Rick Murphy, president of the Nulu Business Association, says businesses are focused on the rebound. He says according to credit card sales, 70% of Nulu retail sales are from out-of-towners. It means that tourism is coming back maybe faster than some people realize. You know, we still have a lot of empty towers downtown on 4th Street and 5th Street, but I really think that businesses are coming back, and I can tell you right now, everybody in this neighborhood is really, really excited about Derby. Last month, Nulu Bach and Wars Fest saw 15,000 people, that event returning after a two-year pandemic hiatus. Last year, Kentucky Derby Festival events and horse racing returned to in-person. It brought Louisville a multi-million dollar economic impact. This year, the Derby is unbridled by capacity limits. Murphy says each business should feel the financial impact of Derby Week. He also says that the urban core and heart of the city is coming back stronger than ever. In Louisville, Brian Martin, WDRB News. As expected, Kentucky's governor vetoed several controversial bills today. WDRB's Hayden Rostevsky explains why and tells us what could happen next. Hayden. Alan, two bills Governor Andy Bashir vetoed today were major topics of debate during this session. He vetoed Senate Bill 83, arguing it violates the U.S. Constitution's equal protection rights. The bill banned transgender children from participating in girls' sports. Supporters of the bill say it ensures a fair playing field for girls and women. Republican governors in several states, including Indiana, have also vetoed similar bills because of lawsuits playing out across the country. 
Bashir also vetoed Senate Bill 1, calling it a step backward for public education in the Commonwealth. The bill controls how U.S. history is taught in public schools, limiting how teachers discuss race and gender issues throughout history. Now, supporters of the bill say it offers a guide for schoolwork based on a, quote, more positive set of American principles. The bill also limits how often the JCPS Board of Education can meet, and Bashir says JCPS was unfairly singled out. Now, since Republicans hold a supermajority in the General Assembly, it is likely they will override the governor's vetoes. Hayden Rostevsky, WDRB News. Hayden, thank you. And the governor also vetoed a bill that would allow new suburban cities in Jefferson County. Bashir says House Bill 314 does not respect the right of the people to control their local government. The bill allows people living in unincorporated parts of Jefferson County to petition Metro Council to form new cities if certain thresholds are met. The bill would also limit the mayor of Louisville to two straight terms. A state commission narrowed a list of finalists down to three for the vacancy on Indiana's Supreme Court. The Judicial Nominating Commission voted Justin Forkner, Judge Dana Kenworthy, and Judge Derek Moltner through today. Forkner is the High Court's Chief Administrative Officer. Kenworthy is on the Grant Superior Court, and Moltner is on the State Appeals Court. Governor Eric Holcomb will select one to replace retiring Justice Stephen David. He has 60 days to make the selection. Mark Weinberg's WDRB weather forecast has the seal of approval from the American Meteorological Society. Well, it looks like the rain is finally moving out and we can have a nice day tomorrow, hopefully. I don't think tomorrow looks terrible. I think compared to the last two days, it looks absolutely amazing. But I think we could fire a few showers as we go towards heat of the afternoon. You know, your bottom line here as we go through the overnight hours is our rain chances for most are generally done. The area that still could see a couple showers, and you can see a few of these are ongoing right now, would be Adair County. County. That would be near Columbia. Outside of that, I think most of us, this is show over. You'll notice there are some showers as we go towards Mount Vernon's, a topic we'll kind of breach as we go through these weathers over the next 45 minutes or so. Out there right now, we've trended into a partly cloudy sky. It was not a bad end to the day at 53 degrees with a south wind at 6. And I think this is one of the important things to note. Our winds never truly go northwesterly. And what we do see on a system like this is much colder in the mid levels, which can allow us to generate a winter mix. But at the low levels, we really never get that true, let's say, Arctic surge. I'm not saying it won't be chilly in the coming days. I'm saying this protects us from something like that's a rain snow mix versus just pure snow. Bottom line is overnight, we can see we're looking at partly cloudy skies. There has been some hints in the data near Elizabethtown or Campbellsville of a couple of showers near daybreak. I think the chance is not great, and I'm just going to keep it at 10%. So 4 a.m. around 46 degrees, and as you step outside to work or kids head to school, 43. Some showers flare tomorrow. I will go through the timeline for those showers and that rain-snow mix on Friday slash Saturday in 10 minutes. All right, Mark, we'll see you then. Thanks. Video shows the chaos when a fight turned into gunshots in Kentucky. Three children and an adult hit. Some people may find this video hard to watch. Police believe at least a dozen teens started fighting Monday evening in Covington. You can hear 13 gunshots before the person recording that video had to hide. Three children from 7 to 14 and a 41-year-old man were shot. A fourth child showed up to the hospital with injuries from the fight. There's no logical reason that three young children are suffering from gunshot wounds. They should be looking forward to playing outside as the weather warms up and looking forward to spring break next week. Police are looking for a 17 year old they say was involved in the shooting. The body of a Louisville man was found in the Ohio River almost three months after he jumped in to save a woman. Newburgh police say they found the body of Adam Thomas on Saturday. In January, LMPD says Thomas jumped into the Ohio River trying to save a woman who jumped in herself. Neither made it back to the riverbank. Police say Thomas's actions were truly heroic and took great courage. A little more room tonight on LMPD's overcrowded tow lot. Remember, today's auction is imperative to making more room at the impound lot and getting abandoned cars off Louisville streets. And as WDRB's Lexi Ratterman shows us, there was big demand for beat up cars. 
Around 60 cars were up for auction today at LMPD's impound lot. Some in decent shape, some beaten down and broken, but for many bidders, that's exactly what they want to throw up their bidding card if the price is right. I'm a retired mechanic, so uh, car auctions usually one like this. I don't think they let you start them or anything. They'll just walk by, stand in front of the car, auction it off, and you buy what you see. and. Hope the good Lord's shining on you. <laughs> well, over 100 people gathered to get a look at the cars and take a chance on a bid this morning during the live in-person auction. Cars, trucks, SUVs, even mopeds, they were all available. The winning bidders had to pay for the vehicle within an hour and a half of the sale and get it towed off the lot by Friday at 5 p.m. Driving it off isn't allowed since the vehicles are not insured or registered. Bidders weren't able to actually start the cars and there was next to no information on most of them, but auctions ASAP, which runs the auctions for LMPD, says the prices reflected that. We'll clear the lot and then our goal as an auctioneer is to maximize the revenue for the seller. So we try to make, you know, try to get the most we can for the seller. And like I said, we've quadrupled the revenue since we took over. The auction was an effort for LMPD to take care of an ongoing problem with broken down cars lining city streets. The auction is meant to clear out some of the overcrowded lot and make room for more cars. To help alleviate some of the overcrowding, LMPD is also working to add a temporary impound lot in Shively. This was the first live in person Person auction open to the public for LMPD since the pandemic began, and they do plan to have more in the future. Lexi Ratterman, WDRB News. A local whiskey maker is closing its doors to the public. The Bardstown Distillery you will not be able to visit much longer. Plus, but nothing's been done. You say you say leak, I say leak slash dump. Neighbors frustrated about a recent chemical spill in their area tonight at 11. Why they say their questions are not being answered. WTRB News is sponsored by Kentucky Trailer. Now hiring. Oh, I'm so excited. Fox Thursday starts with an all new Call Me Cat. I am not jealous. With a game changing ending. Did you forget something? <laughs> then catch the comedy that fans of Parks and Rec will love. Woohoo! Welcome to Flash. It's an all-new hour of comedy Thursday on Fox. Advances in technology have allowed us to close deals from our couch, join conferences on a plane, and engage with customers like never before. Work happens anywhere. Our expert team is dedicated to helping your business navigate, simplify, and manage your communication solutions to match your ambition and keep your team connected, productive, and secure no matter where or when business is happening. Be proactive, have absolute services, check your air conditioner before issues arise. A tune-up saves you money by increasing efficiency and preserving the life of your system. Call today for our $59 early bird tune-up. Only your locally owned Cub Cadet dealer has genuine parts, accessories, trained service technicians, and the widest selection of industry-leading Cub Cadet products. We're here for you whenever you need us, with expert service and support to keep your equipment running at peak performance for years to come. Take advantage of exceptional financing offers from your local Cub Cadet dealer today. Visit one of Jacoby Sales' seven area locations to learn more. It's time to return to tradition because the Kentucky Derby Festival is back and in person. Reunited Thunder over Louisville when the legend returns on Saturday, April 23rd. Claim your spot on the waterfront for the largest annual fireworks show in the country with a special tribute to the Air Force's 75th anniversary presented by Caesar Southern Indiana, Humana, LG&E, Meyer, and UPS. Also, enjoy free tark rides to Thunder thanks to Humana. Visit thunderoverlouisville.org. Your moment, your memories, your festival. Do you want to get people talking about your business? Then you should be one of our next features on WDRV's Talk of the Town. We allow you the TV time to help showcase and detail your distinct brand or services. Call 502-585-0735 or email talkofthetown at wdrv.com.
President Biden announcing another round of sanctions against Vladimir Putin's inner circle. Lawmakers in Congress believe the Ukrainian military can outlast their Russian counterparts. As Lauren Blanchard shows us, they're pushing for Biden to send Ukraine more weapons. This war could continue for a long time, but the United States will continue to stand with Ukraine, the Ukrainian people in the fight for freedom. President Biden unveiled a new round of sanctions against Russia Wednesday. These sanctions target Russian banking and financial institutions, plus members of the government and their families, including Russian President Vladimir Putin's two adult daughters. The president also banned any new investments in Russia. We're going to keep raising the economic costs and ratchet up the pain for Putin and further increase Russia's economic isolation. We're going to stifle Russia's ability and its economy to grow for years to come. The sanctions come following the atrocities that have occurred in Bucha, Ukraine. How many have we collected? Around 300. Many are still buried in gardens, in yards. I think it will take a while to know the exact number. While in Congress, lawmakers also reacting to the violence. When these people are shot simply because of their nationality, they're not, they don't have arms, that's genocide. However, critics of the administration say there needs to be more strength from the Oval Office to get through to Putin. Why are there any new sanctions to announce at all on Russia? We should have thrown the kitchen sink at Russia and imposed every sanction we could weeks ago. The Pentagon has said they are supplying vehicle-destroying switchblade drones to Ukraine and have trained some Ukrainian soldiers on them here in the U.S. before they return home. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Police in Sacramento say at least five people fired guns during a mass shooting over the weekend. Six people died and a dozen were hurt in the shooting in downtown Sacramento. Police say the shooting was gang-related and happened after a fight. The injured include two brothers who have been taken into custody in connection to the shooting. No one has been charged with murder. At least two people are still in the hospital. Police say they've received a number of tips from the public to help them in the investigation. Prosecutors in Minnesota will not file charges against a Minneapolis SWAT team officer who shot and killed Amir Locke. Locke was killed during an early morning no-knock search warrant. The 22-year-old was on a couch in an apartment when police entered as part of a homicide investigation. Locke was not part of that investigation. Police shot Locke after he pointed a gun at officers. His mother says body camera video shows he was startled awake. I'm not going to give up. Right now, the Minneapolis police officer that executed my baby boy on 2222, be prepared for this family because every time you take a step, we're going to be right behind you. This is not over. Locke's death prompted a re-examination of no-knock search warrants. Former President Donald Trump's daughter Ivanka answering questions from the House Committee investigating the January 6th attacks. Nine months into the investigation, the House of Representatives also voted to hold two former Trump advisors in contempt of Congress, calling on the DOJ to pursue charges. Many Republicans argue the committee went beyond its original intent or that its demands for information may backfire. The committee presses forward trying to understand who Trump was speaking with during the riot. The more the select committee seeks to abuse its subpoena authority, the more the House authority will be weakened in the long run. Irrespective of any individuals, um, we're going to continue to, to move forward uh, and to ensure that we're getting to the truth. The committee is expected to hold public hearings starting next month. The final report is expected just before the midterms. Changes coming to the Postal Service, and we're not just talking about the price of stamps. The bipartisan bill President Biden signed and the online tool it's creating to keep track of postal performance. Mark? The good news is it's not going to rain all day tomorrow. That is a win, but I do think we're going to flare some showers, and I want to go through the timeline for these showers. Next. I am a real customer of Bryant Heating and Cooling, and I have been now for 11 years. Why do I do this? Because Bryant has always been here for me. I've had units go down, but when I called them, they were here, and they never left my home until I was comfortable. My system gets regular maintenance to keep it running efficiently. I know that my air conditioner is going to perform its best, even in the worst conditions, but if it doesn't, Bryant will be here. That's why I do this. 
Have you been searching for a hot tub? Well, Southern Comfort Hot Tubs has inventory and it's in stock. That's right, in stock hot tubs. Southern Comfort Hot Tubs has over 50 models in stock and ready for you. We have all sizes and colors in stock. Multiple price points in stock. There is no lead time. There is no wait time. You can get it delivered this week. Do not wait. 12 months, same as cash. Hot tubs now at Southern Comfort Hot Tubs. The big difference between backyard decks is crystal clear when you buy Azek and TimberTech from AWD, the only local stocking dealer in Kentuckyana. If you want a virtually maintenance-free porch or deck that resists scratches and you never have to stain, then you'll want one of these decks for your home. At AWD, you're gonna see a big difference. I feel like we got lucky once. You know, a lot of guys get lucky once. <laughs> Jay Leno. Thank you. And Kevin Eubanks are back together again. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Apparently, Jesus works in mysterious ways, Kev. <laughs> Very much. We have to do something totally unprofessional. Kev, you wanted to flirt with one of the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Well, he's got trouble written all over Kev, doesn't he? <laughs> Hosting the iconic game show. Let's play you bet your life. You lose everything or you double it. It's all or nothing. Oh, God. Oh. You only live once, right? I'm a gambler. All in. That's the big ticket I know. Yeah! All bets are on every day. We're in this together. It's called you bet your life, right? Yeah, we're betting our lives. That's correct! You doubled your money. There you go. <laughs> Three o'clock, you bet your life on WBKI. Ethiopia. 300 pounds of marijuana. I've traveled the world searching for answers, hovered over the Mexico drug trade, traveled to Ethiopia for a medical mission trip. The question is always how. How does it affect your family here at home? People come to us, and I believe we all deserve answers. WDRB allows me to dig deeper and to find the truth. I'm Valerie Chin. My story is standing up for Louisville. Weather, sponsored by Swope, family of dealerships. So let's talk about rain probabilities here as we go through the next couple of days. Your rain chance tomorrow is one of our lower. I've only got it a 30% chance. It sounds funny saying only 30, but we've had some really high rain chances. Friday, I think it's important to note that showers and these two days, both Friday and Saturday, carry rain mix, which would be sleet or rain snow showers. We could see any and all of the above on these days. It doesn't look like it rains the entire day on any of them, but these showers are gonna be out there. You know, today was not the nicest day, but man, it ended great, didn't it? Rich Ammon sent this picture in with just a beautiful view over the Ohio River from Prospect. I love it when you get a day like today where it really, really just is not the best day. But just at the sunset, you just get enough of the breaks in the clouds to really turn your whole opinion of the day. Rainfall amounts, though, bottom line, have been tall. 0.21 in Madison, 0.97 in E-Town, about an inch in Litchfield, 0.4 in Columbia. When we talked about this system, beginning in the week, I said a half an inch to an inch was most likely. Honestly, there were definitely some overproducers that got to around an inch and a half, which would include Louisville. Remember, these numbers do not include yesterday's total. So Louisville inch, Shively 1.1 and Fern Creek about 0.77. So all the rain mostly pulling away from our area. Columbia still has a couple showers left over. As we look right now, you can see we do quiet down. Here is the big issue. This pinwheeling low. Now this is three hours and you're like, wait a minute. That thing's not moving. It's like it's almost stuck. Come back to that. Here's the time lapse today. It's raining. It's raining at four. It's raining at five. And then here we go. The sun just pops out at the perfect time late in the day for a great sunset. 53 now south wind at six miles an hour. I spent a lot of time on the area, but we're cool. We do have lower dew points filtering in. This is important. It means we're not going to see fog like what we saw, saw last night. So here's the now showers pulling away. Small signal southern part of our area a couple overnight. We flare some of these in the heat of the afternoon tomorrow. I wouldn't rule out actually a little tiny hail on a couple of these. And then on Friday, 
you can see the mix and rain showers get going, but you can see the theme there is very clearly not all day rain. So tonight's 43. I'm going to go down to a 10% chance here. West Southwest wind 5 to 10, and that would only be for the southern part of our area AM. Tomorrow's 57. Watch out for a few showers as we go into the heat of the afternoon, breezy afternoon. And we've got the rain snow mix in here on Friday and on Saturday. So let's talk. Could any accumulate in 10 minutes? In your business news tonight, an overhaul for the Boomba's Pizza on Hurstbourne Parkway. It is changing into a Boomba's Pizza and Watch Bar. The restaurant will close temporarily Monday to remodel and rebrand. When finished, it will have all new decor and 160 seats. The inside will look similar to the Boomba's other location in Westport Village and in Jeffersonville. The Hurstbourne spot is expected to reopen in the early summer. Oldham and Shelby counties are getting more than a million dollars from the state government. The Oldham County Water District is getting more than $600,000 to build a water tank. LaGrange Utilities Commission is getting more than a quarter million for improvements. The city of Simpsonville is getting more than $400,000 to improve the sidewalk near Simpsonville Elementary School. Barton 1792 Distillery in Bardstown is ending tours at the end of the month. The company announced today on Facebook that it will no longer offer public tours after April 29th. Leaders cited review of brand needs, capacity, safety, and practicality. Any tours up until that point will happen. Instead, Barton 1792 says it will focus on making whiskey. If you are looking to book a flight, you might be in for a big surprise. Online booking platform Hopper estimates the average price of airline tickets will jump more than 10% this month. Soaring jet fuel prices are driving up the cost for domestic flights by more than $100. Average ticket prices are up more than 40% since January. The report says flight prices could hit their peak in May. President Biden signed the Postal Service Reform Act of 2022. The bill provides the agency with a much needed financial overhaul. The legislation ensures mail delivery six days a week, puts the Postal Service on a more sustainable path, and creates a direct source of transparency. The bill increases transparency by requiring the Postal Service to develop online an, an online public dashboard, updated weekly with local and national service performance data. You'll be able to see in real time how well the Postal Service is delivering for you and for your community. It passed with bipartisan support as well as support from the Postal Service and unions. And USPS announced its new prices for stamps. If approved, a first class mail stamp would cost 60 cents. Postcards would cost 44 cents and international letters would cost $1.40. The Postal Regulatory Commission has to review the prices. The changes would take place starting July 10th. Tech stocks tumbled another day, and coupled with the Federal Reserve's aggressive focus on inflation, that sent markets down. The Dow fell 144 points to close at 34,496. The Nasdaq dropped 315 to end the day at 13,888. For two years, there was one thing you could not get at the happiest place on earth, a hug from Mickey or Minnie Mouse, but that could change in less than two weeks. Mickey and friends had been social distancing at Disney parks because of COVID-19 restrictions. Costume characters could not give hugs, sign autographs, or interact with anyone up close. Disney parks blog announced regular meet and greets will return as early as April 18th. That applies to Disneyland in California, Walt Disney World in Florida, and Disney. Disney cruises. Can you imagine a little one at a park and seeing Mickey and being like, oh, I can't come give you well, a Well, I gotta say, there are a lot of little kids that are afraid of them. Yeah, they run the opposite <laughs> yeah, direction. So they might not be happy about this. <laughs> Never meet your heroes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, this might be the most expensive Happy Meal ever made, and you can only get it at an Atlanta Braves game. The five-figure price tag for this burger and the special prize that it comes with. Plus, Whiskey Row's latest business, the Louisville Comedy Club, what it's expected to bring to downtown, and it's more than just laughter. In Louisville, we experience a wide range of sudden, severe weather. Tree limbs are starting to come down. The Ohio River. Several oh. areas under a tornado warning. Downloading the WDRB weather app is a great way to track approaching storms on a real-time radar map. And for streaming on the go, 
Get the WDRB News app where you can watch live news and weather coverage. Welcome to our Ask a Fiduciary Advisor series with Matt Dickin of Strategic Wealth Designers. Matt, a lot of people have money invested in mutual funds, but many of them don't really understand them, do they? They don't, and that's why we created a guide to help, because a lot of times individuals will have a pretty good amount of money invested in mutual funds, but they have no idea how they work, the good and the bad about them, and they don't know why they own the particular mutual funds that they own currently. When would you want to avoid mutual funds? This is a great question. So you want to avoid using mutual funds as in what's referred to as a dormant account. Now a dormant account is any account that you're not putting money into on a monthly basis. That's the key. So it could be a retirement plan from a previous employer or any other type of an account. If you have mutual funds in it that you're not adding money to it monthly, that's where you typically want to change that and you want to avoid mutual funds. How do viewers request that guide you mentioned? Yeah, so it's very, very simple. You can just go to our website and request it. Matt, learn more by requesting that complimentary copy by giving us a call or going to swdgroup.com forward slash box. Be proactive, have absolute services, check your air conditioner before issues arise. A tune-up saves you money by increasing efficiency and preserving the life of your system. Call today for our $59 early bird tune-up. Have you considered a career in manufacturing? Why not get paid to learn a trade? The Lions Companies is a world-class manufacturer of appliances, store fixtures, and food services components. Join our team. We are hiring machine operators, assemblers, welders, and other positions. We offer competitive pay, retention bonuses for new hires, insurance, paid vacation, 401k, and more. To find out more, go to lions-companies.com and get paid to learn a trade. Hi, this is Eric Hitzelberger with Freedom Property Group. Do you have a home that's costing you too much time and money? Maybe you have equity in a home that you want to get out, or inherited a home you're not sure what to do with, or own an unwanted rental. For over 10 years, we've been the quickest solution to you selling your home as is, with no fees, no commissions, and no hassle. If you're even thinking of selling your home, give us a call today for a free cash offer at 502-373-8333. I was born in Louisville. 9,000 stories and 27 years later, I've seen this city evolve. Time goes by fast. I cover sports, but the goal is to write about the people, to find their truth. There's always a person involved or someone affected in every story. As a journalist, it's important to give unique perspective on all angles. I'm WDRB's Eric Crawford. My story is Louisville. That. No one says it better than Dr. Phil. You need a backbone, not a wishbone, because you can't wish this away. Get filled in with TV's number one daytime talk show. You may not like the answers, but I'm going to tell you what the reality is. Weekdays at 3 on WDRB. We are still learning more about the double murder, kidnapping, and police shooting in New Albany on Monday. Police have now identified the second victim in that double murder. WDRB's Dalton Godby also spoke to the husband of the woman who was taken hostage and hit by a car. He's walking us through the chaos earlier this week. A scary morning in New Albany Monday when a man opened fire at the Circle K at Grantline Road in Beechwood. Police say Sherrick Douglas shot and killed his wife, Brandy, and then shot and killed 43-year-old Lauren Yell, who police say was an innocent bystander. He was there at the gas station, just a customer, um, and happened to, to step out uh, at the wrong time and uh, ended up being a victim himself. Uh, so it's very tragic, very sad. Police say Douglas sped off in a car from the scene and ended up off Charlestown Road at the Onion Restaurant. It was anything but an ordinary morning for the owners of that place. I said, let her go, get me. Richard Wynn and his wife Winnie own the onion. Winnie was taken hostage and dragged to a car in the parking lot by Douglas. She never fully got in the vehicle. Oh my God, God, look, the car is still lucky. The car just ran over the shoulder. Seconds later, police shot at Douglas, who drove toward officers. He was hit and taken to the hospital. Boom, 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 boom. After that, stop. I pull my wife to the back. Douglas ran over Winnie during the chaos, and she's still in the hospital with broken ribs, a broken shoulder, and facial and lung injuries. My wife is sad. It's okay. Medical pill. 
The only thing I, think I, I worry about. But the winds do not have health insurance and medical expenses are expected to be extremely high. The restaurant is closed for at least a week and depending on the medical costs, may be longer. I don't want to cross it. A GoFundMe page has been set up to help raise money for medical bills. Winnie's husband is grateful and hopeful that this will never happen again. I say, please get well soon. You're going to be fine. Just take time. He said, first time, I want to protect you. I want to protect you. Dalton Godby, WDRB News. A federal effort to get illegal guns off the street netted two indictments in Louisville. 19-year-old Raj Tinker is charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon in connection to two different incidents. Isaiah Stoner was indicted for possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. Stoner is also accused of having fentanyl with the intent to sell it. Both face 10 years in prison if convicted. Their arrests are part of a Department of Justice violent crime reduction effort dubbed Project Safe Neighborhood. Well, watch out criminals. Clarksville police has a new canine officer. This is Dozier, a German short-haired pointer. He'll be used as a community relations dog, but is also trained to help with tracking and narcotics investigations. The department says police dogs like Dozier come with a hefty price tag, and it's thankful to everyone who made a donation so far. If you'd also like to help, you can drop off a donation at the Clarksville Police Department. Louisville's comedy circuit just got bigger and brighter thanks to a new venue in the heart of Whiskey Row. WDRB's Jill Skipper introduces us to the new club stepping into the spotlight. Taking the stage during open mic night. You look like a February in the face. Like, you, you got the body of an October. Like, right? New stand-up comedians cut their teeth at the brand new Louisville Comedy Club. She want to introduce me to some guy that just so happened to be in a wheelchair wearing a Fitbit, right? Now, usually. <laughs> Wonderful tool for new comics to use to um, understand how their jokes are actually going to sound um, and how people are actually going to respond to them. The club opened about four weeks ago in the former Impelazeri's on Main Street in the heart of Whiskey Row. You're still definitely in the hustle and bustle. I mean, we're surrounded by other restaurants. We're surrounded by hotels um, that bring people in. We're close to the conference center. The 300-seat room underwent an extensive eight-month top-to-bottom makeover, the front part of the venue known as the Barrel Bar. So we took down walls, we put up beams, um, you know, we moved an entire kitchen area. So it was a long process. The Louisville Comedy Club is the city's only A-tier comedy venue, meaning along with local acts, it can bring in national names such as Ari Spears and Eddie Griffin. And I think that's really what drew us to Louisville is we felt that there was um, a gap here that could be filled in the comedy scene. The club is the sixth venue around the country, I try to tell jokes part of the Washington-based Bark Entertainment. Throughout the bar and club, you have portraits of some late, legendary comedians. You have Norm MacDonald, Rodney Dangerfield, and the most recent, Bob Saget. It's something that we've done at all of our clubs, and it's just supposed to be kind of like a tip of the hat to those people who, um, you know, really made something out of their comedy careers. With recent announcements of big acts like Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle booking Louisville stops at the Palace, those with the comedy club say it's a fit not only the comedy industry needed, but also downtown. Cincinnati is a great hub for comics, and it's so close by, and same for Nashville. Um, but there wasn't a lot here in Louisville for comedy, um, so it felt like we could easily come in here and help grow that. In Louisville, Joel Skipper, WDRB News. <laughs> Comedian Burt Kreischer will bring his fully loaded comedy festival to the KFC Yum Center. Kreischer will be in town June 17th. The Netflix comedian is known for his shirtless stand-up routines. He'll be joined by other comedians, including Dave Attell, Big J Okerson, Taylor Tomlinson, and others. Tickets go on sale on Friday. They start at 50 bucks. You can get pre-sale tickets tomorrow using the code COMEDY. Mark Weinberg's WDRB weather forecast has the seal of approval from the American Meteorological Society. So the next couple days, you'll notice some variations here within our pollen. Tomorrow, we're going to be in the moderate high category. I think we'll get a little better on Friday, but basically because we have more rain showers. And Saturday, we will tail those back a little bit, so we'll, we'll see pollen coming back up. Remember, tree pollen's the issue this time of the year. Elm, juniper, maple are our main pollen issues out there. Today was a great day. You're like, wait, where were you? A great 
end to the day because we got a good sunset. You know, all that we dealt with today in terms of that moderate and heavy rain, the sun still came out and the sun still created a great sunset. Charles Noble captured this out of Bardstown, Kentucky, and this picture coming in from Kelly Coleman at Leavenworth, Indiana. And I just thought both of these pictures were really peaceful after what may not have been the nicest day across the area. A couple of showers lingering here. Adair County right now, this would be near Columbia. It's really all that's left over at this point. So recapping rainfall amounts. Louisville did well on this. 0.85 in Clarksville across the river from downtown. 0.88 in the east end. Middletown, one inch. The official reading at the airport, Muhammad Ali International coming in at an inch. And look at Shively at 1.1. Somebody asked me today, what is what has the period been like? Is this rainier than normal? The answer is yes, at 2.78. But we have seen higher surpluses this time of the year. Uh, yes, again, we're above normal, but a lot of times we end up above normal earlier on in the year and then later in the year, summer in particular, we can sometimes give some of that away. Our temperature now in Louisville sits at 53, south wind at six miles an hour. It's one of the interesting things about this. We haven't really seen the wind shift yet. 45 in Cordon with an east wind at three. And we close it out in Elizabethtown right now at 48 with a south southeast wind at four. What we will see is the wind shift to the west tonight. It's not really what you would look for for Arctic air, and that's not what's going to be happening on this one. But that may be able to generate south of the river a shower. Here is the colder that is trapped underneath the high 40s to our northwest. I think the other important thing to note here is the winds are really going to start to pick up. I don't think we'll see 40 mile an hour gusts, but I do think we're going to see some 30s here in the coming days and Yes, it has been cold, but it is notably uh, we're seeing a trend downward in the temperatures to our northwest. These are 24 hour temperature changes that are near 10 degrees to our northwest. That's what I think dips in here for Friday and Saturday is this upper level low basically camps and parks on top of us. So I think we're partly cloudy overnight. Remember how I mentioned south of the river a shower may generate and you can see a couple of those showing tomorrow afternoon. I don't think it's worth more than 30%, but some showers generate tomorrow afternoon. I actually wouldn't rule out maybe a, a, a touch of some tiny hail and a few of the stronger showers. You can see on Friday early mixed showers, afternoon would be rain showers, and then overnight into Saturday we see some snow showers. And I think it's an honest question to ask, could this accumulate? I don't think there's enough out of this to accumulate on pavement. But if you're asking me, could we see some on the deck or grassy surfaces, my answer would be it's not out of the question. Tonight's 43 degrees with clouds on the decrease. West southwest wind 5 to 10. Tomorrow afternoon, our high temperature is 57. Tomorrow is not a bad day because we will see sun early before the showers pop in the afternoon. Into the extended, Friday carries an 80% chance. Mixed showers early. PM rain showers. We'll watch for Saturday. More mixed showers. High temperature 20 to 23 degrees below normal. Sunday's your better weekend day. Frost early, sunshine late at 63. And I'm ready for those 70s. Mark, thank you. Scott Reynolds here now with a stinky side effect of COVID-19. Yeah, a pretty tough problem. This Louisville woman used to eat meat, eggs, and chocolate, but not anymore. Because to her, they smell horrible. It's similar to like a feces, like bodily excretion smell, but not quite. Ooh, the smell disorder that robbed her of her appetite for some of her favorite foods. Plus a move to keep students safe left some of them far behind. The low participation rates JCPS saw during virtual learning earlier this year. We'll dig into those numbers and much more when we see you here coming up in less than 20 minutes. All right, Scott, thank you. Big oil execs are called out on Capitol Hill to explain why Americans are paying so much at the pump. Big oil is lining their pockets with one hand and taking billions in taxpayer subsidies with the other. Meanwhile, the American people are getting ripped off as these companies choose to keep production low so that their own profits stay high. We do not control the market price of crude oil or natural gas, nor of refined products like gasoline and diesel fuel. And we have no tolerance for price gouging. Heads of energy companies like BP, Chevron, Exxon, and Shell testified in front of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce today. They claim Russia is responsible for the price hike. According to AAA, gas prices are slightly lower after President Biden's move last week, releasing one million oil barrels a day for six months. TARC will compete with public transit systems across the country to get a portion of the more than $20 billion in COVID-19 relief money. Former South Bend mayor turned U.S 
Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says it is the largest investment in public transit in our nation's history. It's meant to help buy new buses and rail cars, address repair backlogs, and help agencies transition to cleaner technologies to address climate change. Agencies like TARC will vie for the money through grant applications. Wheaties may be the breakfast of champions, but the reigning World Series winners have crafted the burger of champions. This is much bigger than a <laughs> box of meaty, er, Wheaties, but it is pretty meaty. You see what I yeah. there? And it'll cost you, ready for this, $25,000. That's a beefy burger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Atlanta Braves uh, created this special burger called the World Champions Burger. It is a half pound of Wagyu beef topped with grilled lobster tail and gold leaf wrap for for gras, it comes with a real World Series ring and Parmesan waffle fries. And if 25K is too much for you, you can get a replica ring and a burger combo for about 150 bucks. Now, I, some people are gonna, a lot of people are going to do that. that. I know, Wagyu beef and lobster? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's a lot. Mix. That's a lot too. That, that looked like there were some like eggs on there too. Maybe some avocado. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. A lot of everything. Yeah. Listen, 25 grand, you throw the kitchen sink at it. Right? Yep. Um, a Southern Indiana business is getting bigger with the help from the city. In return, it's getting hundreds of jobs. The six-figure investment this expansion is also putting back into Madison, Indiana. UK basketball losing one player. What about the player of the year? Rick and Eric discuss his decision on tonight's sports page. As we had a break, Meg Millions jackpot for Friday, 94 million. Tonight's Powerball, 246 million. season chicken tenders are for Joe. Joe wants his son's project to be number one. Woo. So we took our number one famous seasoned fries and added the same secret blend of spices to create Riley's new fry season tenders. Made with 100% white meat chicken and mm, all coated with our famous fry seasoning. Now that's a winning combination. Genius recognizes genius, Joe. Come get your new fry season tenders. You've earned it. Join Riley's rewards for a free Buford or Mother Cruncher. In the United States, we see more tornado outbreaks than anywhere else in the world. Being prepared is being safer. Tornadoes start as an EF zero. 65 to 85 mile an hour winds will cause broken tree limbs and roof damage. As this tornado travels, it will intensify. This tornado now looks more like a stovepipe with winds hovering around 135 miles an hour. An EF2 tornado can destroy mobile homes and snap power poles. If you are without a basement, keep as many walls between you and the outside as possible. We now have reached EF4 level with winds hovering around 185 miles an hour. This tornado is now so powerful, it's obliterating everything it touches, strong enough that it can send a truck flying through the air. As cold air wraps around the storm, it breaks the funnel apart. Be prepared with the WDRB weather team. How do you rebuild your life when you've lost everything? They never thought this would happen. Their lives changed in an instant. After the deadly Kentucky tornadoes, there were so many volunteers from all over the country. Now, two months later, we're following some local volunteers and heroes who are making sure these communities are not forgotten. So we've connected with some veterans today. We're gonna to connect with some veterans tomorrow as well. And just make sure that they know that, hey, we're here. We're only three and a half hours away. People still keep a positive attitude. They see hope in all this. They are thankful to be alive. They really have a new understanding about hardship. So many people come in the restaurant that they're by themselves. They don't have anybody 
They need somebody to be there. When I go down there, everybody's smiling and laughing, and it wasn't torn up, and it's like it's always been, you know, so it's kind of like going back home. A major business expansion in southern Indiana is expected to help one city grow. WDRB's Christy Batista shows us just how many jobs and tax dollars will go right back into Madison. Let Super ATV fuel your off-road passion. It's a company that manufactures ATV parts and accessories. Visit Super ATV. And Super ATV is headquartered right here in Madison. We ship orders up until 4 o'clock every single day, and if you place it, 99% go out same day. But what we also have to do is have the footprint in the inventory to, to service those customers. This $60 million expansion will allow them to do just that, adding 125,000 square feet for production and logistics. And it puts Madison on the map, not just being a small community on the river, but really being a regional destination where you want to live, work, uh, play, visit, and certainly here, invest in the city of Madison. This is the latest project for economic development in Madison. Last month, the mayor announced a retail space and apartment complex, and he expects to be releasing more plans soon. Super ATV worked with the mayor to create a new TIF district, which will bring in $1.5 million that will be reinvested into the city over the next decade. When we're talking about economic development, we're always looking at the opportunity to leverage our dollars. And uh, we've done that successfully, and we have a lot more announcements to come. We are Super ATV. The Super ATV expansion is expected to be complete in two phases and add 315 jobs. I really envision an improved quality of life. We're going to bring higher paying jobs. We're going to bring people into the town where they're going to establish themselves. Super ATV. It's just going to continue to add to Madison's already existing amazing culture and community. In Madison, Christy Batista, WDRB News. Local volunteers put together medical kits for hospitals in Ukraine. They sorted and packed surgical supplies at the SOS facility in Louisville this morning. That's formerly known as Supplies Overseas. All of this will be shipped to hospitals in war-torn Ukraine. A total of about 100,000 donated medical items will head overseas. A Ukrainian woman who now lives in Louisville says these supplies will help people like her family members who are displaced. I'm going to volunteer today in here, which means that there will be other people in here helping us because I want people in Ukraine to know that they are not alone. And that is actually helps them a lot. Kids are expected to get to the hospitals in about two weeks. Today's event was part of Louisville's Give a Day program. Louisville City stepping out of a USL championship play to host a U.S. Open Cup match against Chattanooga Red Wolves. Second round of the knockout competition over all different levels of American soccer. Unable to finish several good chances in the opening half. But the boys took advantage of a turnover in the 75th minute. Corbin Bone knocks it ahead to Wilson Harris. He buries in the left corner, putting Lou City up 1-0. They nearly added another on the header by Ian Soler off the set piece. City advances to round three, one nil over Red Wolves. Kentucky's Ty Ty Washington moving on. Freshman guard is declared for the NBA draft and will not be returning to UK. He averaged 12 points, four assists, three rebounds a game. Was named all SEC second team and was a league freshman of the week five times. He becomes the 31st player in the John Calipari era to, to declare for the draft after his freshman season. 27 of those players have been first round picks. Well, Eric, on Wednesday we got the news that Kentucky point guard Ty Ty Washington putting his name in the NBA draft. But the question I think a lot of Kentucky fans have is what about Oscar Shibway, unanimous national player of the year? Should he come back or should he go to the pros? Well, it's interesting because this is kind of a sign of the times or maybe we call it a dollar sign of the times because in, in the past there'd be no question if, if you had this kind of, of season and your national player of the year, and I'm not sure where he's in the mock drafts, but it's an automatic go. But name, image, and likeness money being what it is, he's going to have to look. If he's not a high first-round draft projection, 
he might be able to make more money at Kentucky for one more season. Certainly you're more marketable at Kentucky than you are in the NBA for one more season. And his skills might lead him to be a bigger star in college basketball than in the pros. So, yeah, I think you got to strongly consider coming back if you're him. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and currently looking at the NBA mock drafts, in a lot of them, he's a second round pick. But I'll go really old school. He's got unfinished business. He was the unanimous national player of the year, but didn't win the SEC, didn't win the SEC tournament, didn't win uh, an NCAA tournament game. I think he has a comeback to Kentucky where he's a huge fan favorite. You're right. He can cash in on NIL money and cement his legacy really as one of the all-time Kentucky greats and fan favorites. I think he should come back. I think he will come back. But we'll stay on top of it here and follow it at WDRB and WDRB.com. A late bats rally came up just short in last night's season opener. Having to play from behind again tonight against St. Paul. Already up 1-0 in the first when Jake Cave drives one to right center. Royce Lewis and Mark Contreras both score. It was 3-0 before Louisville came to the plate. Bottom of the third, Lorenzo Cedroa singles to center. Here comes Chucky Robinson, the throw from Gilberto Celestino in time to get Robinson for the second out of the inning. Next batter, TJ Friedel rips one to right, and this is just high enough to get out. Three-run shot to tie the game at three. They never got the lead. St. Paul prevails 7-4. 142 more games on the schedule for the Bats. Reds get things started tomorrow at Atlanta. All right. Thanks, Tom. All right. You know, that first haircut can be kind of difficult mm -hmm. for the kiddos, especially even more so if your child has autism. The Fern Creek Barber with a personal reason for making that experience easier for everyone. Louisville is home. When I hear Louisville, I think loving, friendly people, but hardworking people at the same time. Pride of Louisville never leaves you. I feel like my children are well-rounded people because they've met a diverse group of people. Just in living and experiencing the city is tremendous. Enjoy summer with a motorcycle or ATV loan from Class Act. Whether you're purchasing or refinancing, Class Act offers quick and easy pre-approvals. Take advantage of lower payments with extended terms. Class Act Federal Credit Union. Your adventure, your rules. Be proactive. Have Absolute Services check your air conditioner before issues arise. A tune-up saves you money by increasing efficiency and preserving the life of your system. Call today for our $59 early bird tune-up. Our workday starts at 4 a.m. Are you surprised at the people who are up working at the crack of dawn? You know, we talk about UPS, we talk about Ford, we talk about health care, people getting off their shift and coming home and trying to chill out. And, and those are the folks who we're talking to, the hardworking folks that are making our economy move. You know, I run into a couple of people that are bus drivers for the school systems. They get up very early and they want to see the weather forecast and they also want to see that traffic. I'm a landscaper, I do paving work, I do roofing work, and they really are counting on us to give them a forecast. I want to take the dog out for a walk. The kids are going to go to the playground. Is it going to rain at this exact same time? Get them ready at 5 a.m. and the day keeps on going. I have a lot of farmers and people who work outside, like construction workers or builders. They always tell me they get up with us early because they need to prepare for the day and find out what the weather is. You get to appreciate, you know, the people who do those jobs. It's an honor, you know, to, yes, it is. to help, them, help them get through their day. We all would like to smile and laugh every day, but that's not real life. We lose jobs, we lose loved ones, we go through tough times and we get up, hopefully after each of those challenges. And so for me in this show, we really wanted to inspire people and I think that I'm inspired and I believe many people are inspired when they hear how someone got back up. As a kid, my favorite movie was Rocky. And I always tell people, you're gonna get knocked on the mat, but you gotta get back up. And those are the things that we dig into on this show. We try to figure out what someone else has learned from a mistake and share that with the audience. We also look for ways to inspire and be better. We want the best life we can live. We want the best life that we can provide for our children. I think at the end of the day, that's one of those common threads that brings us together. And that's what we really try to capture on this show. We try to capture the whole experience of it, not just the end of the book, not the front cover, but the pages that it takes to make or help try to get the best life that you deserve. And I believe that we all deserve that. Here's what's hot off the bat this week at Louisville Slugger Field. It's the season and home opening week for the Louisville Bats. 
Our first of the year homestand runs all this week into this Enjoy summer with a motorcycle or ATV loan from Class Act. Whether you're purchasing or refinancing, Class Act offers quick and easy pre-approvals. Take advantage of lower payments with extended terms. Class Act Federal Credit Union. Your adventure, your rules. Well, when you get a haircut, you better go back home. When you get a haircut, you get a um, Black Shears, a new Fern Creek barbershop, offers more than just a haircut. The owner's six-year-old son has autism, so she's created a sensory-friendly experience for others like it. WDRB photojournalist Tom Round takes us in for a trim. My name is Tiffany Lee. I'm a barber and I'm a loctician. It's been a while since I've seen you. You're hurting a whole lot. I love cutting hair because I have the opportunity to change someone's style, give them a different look when they walk out, make them feel good. My mother, she's a cosmetologist. My father, he's a barber. So it's just in my blood to become a barber. Let's get you your haircut. After my son was diagnosed at two years old with autism, I said I need to have a job where I can go and help him and be there for him. He likes to feel the clip. So I said I should become a barber. It was, you know, something I, I always enjoyed doing was cutting hair. So I became a barber. Most of all kids hate getting a haircut. What can I do to make them more comfortable um, so they can get a haircut and they can look good and feel good about themselves? So I decided to do a sensory friendly barber shop. It's supposed to pull the child back in the chair or adult. We have weighted capes, noise cancellation headphones. The sensory bin has like soft toys. We have the lightings, we have the soothing sounds of the noise. I'm also going to have ABA therapists here to help and assist us with some of the haircuts if we need to be. And we have great barbers. It doesn't matter, all kids hate getting a haircut. So I think this would be more fun. They come in, they see the lights. I think it'll make them feel more comfortable in a comfortable setting. While school is in, Friday and Saturday, we'll have specific times for sensory friendly hours. And then the rest of the time, we're just a regular barbershop. We accept all clientele. It's diversity in our hearts and in our shirts. So we accept anyone, it doesn't matter who you are. I'm just blessed to have this opportunity to build this business. I would like to in the future have several franchises of sensory friendly barbershops of Blackshire Barbershop. We did good. <laughs> Such a great idea for yeah. the little ones. Yeah, really good. Blackshire's grand opening is Saturday. The sh shop does accept walk ins. We've got more news, weather, and sports on the way. WDRB News at 11 with Hayden and Scott starts right now. Hundreds of gallons of chemicals spilled out into a local sewer system. Tonight, WDRB's Katrina Nickel was at a meeting to address concerns about that spill, but as she tells us, some neighbors left even more frustrated. Katrina? Preliminary reports say the chemical spill happened here at Allnex. It's a chemical manufacturer on Crittenden Drive. Back on March 11th, potentially hundreds of gallons of styrene, a chemical used to make things like latex and synthetic rubber, spilled into the sewer system. Tonight, Metro Council member Nicole George brought in some city agencies to find out how this happened. What they said happened was that they had a piping under the wash tank wasn't capped and some material from a settling tank the day before was pumped into the wash tank. That material plugged the bottom open line of the wash tank until the next morning when the plug broke loose and the material spilled onto the floor. Neighbors say the spill created an odor that smelled like paint thinner. People say they were also frustrated the day of because some were told to stay inside their homes while others were told to stay outside. After a few hours of remediation, neighbors were allowed to return home the same day. Many neighbors who have lived in the area for years claim this isn't the first time there's been an issue with all necks and chemical like odors. I would say four or five times a year. And I, the first thing I do is I go see my friends at the fire department because at least they make an effort. City leaders say a chemical spill did happen at the facility back in 2010. Allnex had to pay a $15,000 fine and evaluate the facility. The city's air pollution control district says since 2020, they've responded to three complaints involving the plant. Katrina Nickel, WDRB News. Thanks, Katrina. The second person killed in a New Albany double murder is now identified. 43-year-old Lauren Yell was shot and killed at the Circle K gas station Monday morning. 
It's at the corner of Grantline Road and Beechwood Avenue. Investigators say 37-year-old Cherick Douglas shot and killed Yell right after shooting and killing his wife, 38-year-old Brandy Douglas. Detectives believe Yell was just an innocent bystander. He was there at the gas station, just a customer, um, and happened to, to step out uh, at the wrong time and uh, ended up being a victim himself. Uh, so it's very tragic, very sad. Police say after the shooting, Chirac Douglas drove off and ended up taking a woman hostage at the Onion restaurant off Charlestown Road. Police say he held her at gunpoint and forced her into an SUV, but she was eventually able to get out of that vehicle, suffering several broken bones in the process. Shortly after, police arrived on scene. An officer shot Douglas when he tried to run them over. He faces kidnapping and robbery charges and will likely face additional charges soon. A Sellersburg man accused of murdering his wife learned his final charges in court today. The Clark County prosecutor is charging 45 year old Mac Lewis with murder, attempted murder and three counts of criminal recklessness. Lewis is accused of shooting and killing his wife Elizabeth Lewis in front of her 11 year old daughter and her daughter's friend. Lewis pleaded not guilty today. His trial is set for September 6th. Mark Weinberg's WDRB weather forecast has the seal of approval from the American Meteorological Society. You know, I mean, truth be told, if you seeded your lawn or if you put any sod down, this week's rain may not have necessarily been a bad thing. If that doesn't include you, then yeah. The last two days, you're probably not really enjoying necessarily. We have seen quite a bit of rain. As we look right now, you'll notice Stormview HD is showing the initial batch of rain pulling away. One of the things I really tried to stamp this week is the severe weather risk really was not for our area. You had to head further off to the east to the I-75 corridor and really south to get into that legitimate severe threat. And, and fortunately for our area, that turned out to be true. As we look out there right now, I will say the nice thing about today is we were able to get rid of some of those clouds late in the day. It made for a great sunset. Temperatures are now starting to fall. So we're now down to 50 degrees. We've got a southeast wind at five miles an hour. That wind late tonight will shift to the west. And in that process of that wind shifting, a couple of showers may be able to generate south of the river. So as we look at advanced track at three, we're generally looking partly cloudy. Some of the data showing maybe one or two showers as we look at the far southern part of our area as we move beyond around 4 a.m. And I am going to courtesy that with a 10%. It's a low probability. 4 a.m. is 46, 7 a.m. 43 degrees. Showers flare tomorrow. I'll go through the timeline and Friday into Saturday. Rain, snow, showers. Let's talk about whether any could accumulate in 10 minutes. Thanks, Mark. From transgender athletes to school curriculum. Governor Andy Bashir vetoing some controversial bills today. WDRB's Fallon Glick explains what could happen now. Fallon? Scott, these were bills already passed by state lawmakers, but Bashir decided not to sign off on them and instead vetoed them. Let's start with Senate Bill 1 on school curriculum. It tells teachers how U.S. history can be taught in public schools regarding issues of race and gender. It also limits how often the JCPS Board of Education can meet, only allowing it to meet once every four weeks. Bashir also vetoed Senate Bill 83. It bans transgender girls from participating in girls' sports from sixth grade through college and House Bill 314 was vetoed, which would have allowed new suburban cities in Jefferson County. It would have also limited Louisville's mayor to two terms. Now, even though these bills were vetoed by the governor, they could still become law. Republicans hold a super majority in the General Assembly, which means they could override Bashir's vetoes. Fallon Glick, WDRB News. Thanks, Fallon. Supporters of a criminal justice reform bill in Kentucky say access to an education is the key. Senate Bill 163 would give previously incarcerated young adults the option to access the college scholarship money they may have earned in high school. Right now, that's not allowed. Money is earned with good grades through the Kentucky Education Excellence Scholarship Program, or KEYS. This bill would remove the part that prohibits those who committed nonviolent felonies. Can we pull people out of a life of crime, especially when they're maybe at that younger age and get them on the right track, get them an education, um, help them with employment? The measure passed both chambers, but with some adjustments in the House, it still needs a final OK in the Senate. But time is running out. Lawmakers only have two more days left in this session their next week.
Area counties are opting in to receive a chunk of opioid settlement money. Between Kentucky and Indiana, nearly a billion dollars is up for grabs after historic settlements with opioid companies were reached in February. Now Clark and Floyd counties are among those opting in to receive some of those funds. Local organizations say unlike other grants, this funding will give them more of a say in how that money is used. Do we want to take the programs that are working and bolster them and make sure that they're sustainable, you know, long into the future as, as things move forward? And then also coming up with new programming and, and addressing some areas that, uh, you know, that have long been problem areas that are hard to, hard to fund. Counties have until July to opt in. The first wave of funding is expected to be given out within the next few months. Fatigue, migraines, brain fog, all long-term effects some COVID survivors face. But there's another you may not know about. As WDRB's Darby Bean found out, it can make your favorite foods smell like sewage. I do the almond milk and then the vanilla flavoring because it kind of masks the flavor. Megan Smith has learned a lot over the past year about masking flavors and figuring out what foods she does and doesn't want to keep in the pantry. I love pickled red onions. I think the vinegar is a flavor that I can tolerate. She tested positive for COVID in January of 2021, a mild case that lasted just a few days, but her taste and smell disappeared for about a month. When those senses returned, certain things no longer smelled like they used to to Megan. At work the other day, I walked past the cafeteria and it smells the same as like the dirty linen closet. She says candles, floral scents still smell like they should. Yeah, it smells normal. But eggs, chocolate, meat, now things she can't stand. It's indescribable. Um, I've seen it online as the COVID smell because it isn't like anything I've ever smelled before. Like I said, like it is similar to like a feces, like bodily excretion smell but not quite. And it can be a big, big deal for patients. Dr. Kevin Potts says patients like Megan aren't alone. He describes this as a smell disorder called parosmia, where certain smells are distorted. He says it's caused by damage to nerve fibers in the nose from a head injury, bad sinus conditions, or most commonly, upper respiratory infections. We all know that COVID-19 has been um, a very common source of this condition. Dr. Potts says parosmia was around before before the pandemic, but since it began, he has seen a large rise in the number of cases. Some patients find it annoying, others struggling to maintain a healthy diet. Patients that I've seen, they can't tolerate eating because of the smell that's induced by whatever food it is they're eating. Good news, he says, is most patients recover within a few months. But for those like Megan, as a year approaches, she's learning to deal with it the best she can. I've tried to make the majority of my changes through lifestyle changes and finding what I like, what I can tolerate sometimes, and, you know, just taking it day by day. Darby Bean, WDRB News. Isolation and quarantine are two terms we now know all too well, but Churchill Downs has been using those practices for decades. Churchill's medical director says at a racetrack, hundreds of horses are kept close together and just like humans, horses can spread diseases. Horses from all over the country come to Kentucky to race, which is why the state requires horses to be vaccinated for some of the more common ones like herpes. Horses coming to Churchill must also be checked over by a vet shortly before arrival. Our protocols really are the same every day because we, our horses are important to us the day after Derby as they were the day before the Kentucky Derby. Um, but uh, we, I think people are definitely more vigilant um, and we're just making sure that uh, you know, we dot all our I's, cross all of our T's. Churchill Downs also has three quarantine barns. Any horse coming from another country is required to stay there first to ensure they do not have any foreign diseases. A spike in COVID-19 cases forced 100,000 JCPS students to learn online. Yeah, the problem is many of them weren't online at all. These past two years in navigating this pandemic has taught us a lot of lessons. Uh, and that, you know, one of those is, is that NTI isn't for everyone. What kept students from logging on and the district's plan to help students who have fallen behind. WDRB News is sponsored by Kentucky Trailer, now hiring.
Advances in technology have allowed us to close deals from our couch, join conferences on a plane, and engage with customers like never before. Work happens anywhere. Our expert team is dedicated to helping your business navigate, simplify, and manage your communication solutions to match your ambition and keep your team connected, productive, and secure, no matter where or when business is happening. Here's a simple truth about higher education. If pursuing your purpose, doing what you really care about matters. If having a rewarding career matters. If a better financial future for you and your family matters. Then higher education matters. A brighter future is within your reach. Find out how at kyhigheredmatters.org. Brought to you by this station and the Kentucky Broadcasters Association. Day, catch the comedy people are calling funny and one that fans of Parks and Rec will love. It sounds pretty awesome. Welcome to Flatch, all new Thursday, 930, 830 Central on Fox. JCPS students spent nine days learning from home at the beginning of this semester, mostly because of rising COVID cases that sent hundreds of students and teachers into quarantine. As WDRB education reporter Kevin Wheatley found out, not everyone had the same experience when classes went virtual. When COVID cases spiked earlier this semester, Jefferson County Public Schools decided to close its school doors. So we did have to make a very difficult decision. Uh, to move to NTI, non-traditional instruction, for this week. But many students didn't log on for class. Records obtained by WDRB News show, for those nine days of remote learning, more than 30 schools and programs lagged behind the district's average participation rate for every day of NTI. District-wide participation rates averaged 82% during NTI. Most of the schools with lower participation are high poverty schools, are those that serve vulnerable students like those with disabilities. An analysis shows most of those schools are in western and southwestern Louisville. Each school on this map participates in the federal Title I program for students from low-income families, and many are among the lowest performing schools by test scores in the state. It clearly identifies that some of our students did not have the same amount of time which can ultimately impact uh, their, their uh, learning. So now that we know that, uh, the question is, what are our plans to work with uh, the young people? These past two years in navigating this pandemic has taught us a lot of lessons. Uh, and that, you know, one of those is, is that NTI isn't for everyone. Um, it's a tool that can be used to keep kids safe, which should be our number one goal. Uh, but I think there are, you know, some areas of growth. Diane Porter and Joe Marshall represent the districts with the most schools that lag behind. Neither is surprised given the struggles that many in their districts face. Marshall says teachers in his district struggle to maintain contact with their students during NTI. And he believes some students chose to work extra shifts during that time. When you move into NTI, that family has got to put food on the table, goes into scramble mode to figure out where's my kid going to go. And the last thing on their mind is, do you have your Chromebook uh, and the work that needs to get done? No, we have a lot of families that 
have a lot of needs. Porter, the school board's chairwoman, says internet connectivity and household responsibilities like caring for younger siblings or relatives stood in the way for many students in her district. Now that we know that uh, what the numbers look like, the question is, what is our plan to take care of this? Because everyone will never be the same academically, but there should not be a significant difference in um, the progress instructionally for our students, in my personal opinion. We want to ensure success for all students and having students engaged in their educational process is certainly a key factor to making that happen. JCPS says it is working to help students who struggled during NTI with more learning opportunities outside of school and during the summer. But we'll continue to work, not just into this summer, but next year and the years to come to close the gap, not just from NTI this past January, but the impact of what the pandemic is doing um, educationally um, for our students. Kevin Wheatley, WDRB News. JCPS expects to open summer learning opportunities to 10,000 students this year to help with the lost learning time. That's about a tenth of the district's overall enrollment. You can find a complete list of schools with low participation rates on our website, WDRB.com. WDRB Weather, sponsored by Swope Family of Dealerships. So the last couple of days, some probably noticed that they were having some allergy issues. That's because of the rain and mold spores. The next couple of days, we get back into traditional pollen. So tomorrow will be moderate high category, coming down a little bit on Friday with some of our showers, nudging back up on Saturday, moderate high. Elm, juniper, maple, our trees are the pollen issues, and you definitely can see that as you look in your neighborhood or outside of your house, apartment. Uh, there are definitely trees now that are in bloom, and so if you have allergies uh, to trees, this is definitely the time of the season where you notice that. What a crazy day today where we saw an inch of rain and then got a really good sunset. We actually sandwiched that into the heavy rain with a nice sunrise this morning. Rich Ammon sent this of the sunset this evening out of Prospect and this from Charles Noble. Just a nice glow at sunset this evening from Bardstown. So our rain's pulling away from the area. Had a few showers lingering around Columbia. Those have since pulled. Steadier rain now moving into the bluegrass. I think we're settling into a quiet night. So how much rain did we see? West End got to 0.93. Sellersburg a little bit lower at 0.52. Clark still 0.85. And you can see in the core of Louisville, a lot saw an inch of rain, which includes the airport in Shively. Somebody asked me today, you know, it, it seems like it's been rainy. Where do we stand for the year? You know, the interesting thing is if you take out the last two days, we were barely an inch above normal. And I know it feels like it's rained a lot, but this is a time of the year where we get a lot. So the last two days put us at a surplus of 2.78. Honestly, that's not a huge amount. And the reason I say that is because a lot of time in summer, we can kind of pull back on some of that. 50 degrees, the temperature now in Louisville under a southeast wind at five miles an hour. Remember yesterday when we looked in Corridon, thick fog was out there. Today, there's a touch of fog out there, but I think with our winds, it should mitigate this concern during the overnight. And we're looking in Elizabethtown right now with a south wind at three. This may also generate a little fog for the next couple of hours, but again, breeze kicks up around daybreak. I think we'll get rid of that. So our temperatures all around our area are chilly. What I do want you to notice is that our winds are notably stronger to our northwest. And with this low coming towards us, it becomes more breezy tomorrow. And I think as we go towards the later part of this week, especially as you look towards Friday and Saturday, those temperatures are going to be way. I don't mean below normal. I mean, I'm talking 20 to 25 degrees below normal, which is an incredible amount as this low camps. I mean, it parks on top of us. So tonight we'll go partly cloudy. You'll notice a stray shower could occur in the southern part of our area. That's my 10%. Tomorrow we do have a 30%. I don't know how else to emphasize this than other than saying it doesn't rain all day. And if you catch a shower, it will be short lived in the afternoon. Friday, it's not an all day rain or mix, but you do notice there's mixed showers early. There's rain showers late. And those then on Friday night into Saturday transition over to snow showers, which come to an end late in the day on a really chilly Saturday. Frost very likely Sunday morning, and then we start to warm up. So I know it's a natural question with snow showers on Friday, Friday night into Saturday. 
Could anything accumulate on the roads? I don't think so, but some elevated surfaces. I wouldn't rule out a light minor accumulation. So 43 degrees tonight. You should expect the clouds to be decreasing with a west southwest wind about five to 10 miles an hour. Tomorrow we touch a high of 57 degrees, 30% chance of some PM showers and into the extended Friday and Saturday are cold. We don't make it out of the 40s. We've talked about the mix. Frost starts Sunday. We go to 63 and if you like warmer, okay. Tuesday, let's do 74. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Mark. Louisville Parks and Rec wants to develop a long term aquatics plan. The city currently has four outdoor pools and the indoor aquatic center. Officials are looking for ideas on future programs and investments. Feedback will be heard at four separate meetings. The first is on April 18th at the Sun Valley Community Center. Another will be held April 21st at the Southwick Community Center. April 26th will be held at the Mary T. And the final meeting will be April 28th at the Newburgh Community Center. Each meeting is from 6 to 7.30. You can also submit your ideas online. A basketball wildcat? Moving on, while one of the football Wildcats continues to reap the name, image, and likeness benefits, this time in conjunction with an athlete from a very different sport. Louisville is inspiring. The people of Louisville are really what make this community whole. People here appreciate nature. They appreciate farming. For me, that's so important in my life to regroup and recharge, especially in Louisville when there are so many beautiful places like this. The U.S. Women's National Team gear up for World Cup qualifying with a friendly against Uzbekistan. She scores! Saturday at 5 Eastern on Fox. Morgan & Morgan is not only America's largest injury firm, we're also very much a local firm. When you call us, you not only get all of our resources, 24-7 availability, and some of our great trial lawyers from across the country, but you also get a team of dedicated staff and attorneys right from your community, handpicked by me. Think of it as the best of both worlds. Morgan & Morgan is from your city, we're in your city, we are forthepeople.com. From the rising stars to the shining moments, WTRB Sports Team is the source for Kentuckiana sports. Presented by DQ, a proud supporter of your home teams. Rise and shine and head to DQ for breakfast with fluffy biscuits baked daily. You can choose DQ's delicious biscuits and gravy with rich, meaty country gravy, a perfectly portable classic breakfast burrito, or one of DQ's breakfast bowls filled with all your breakfast favorites in one convenient bowl. DQ, happy tastes good. There is a little known fact that schools are desperate for funding. They are allotted X amount of dollars through their budget, but anything extra they need, like extra Chromebooks, repairs, renovations, recess equipment, they have to fundraise it all year long. Their job doesn't just start when the bell rings and end when the school day is over. Going the extra mile, trying to do what's best for our students is what, it was what makes them true heroes. So here's how education started in 2017, and over time it evolved as a way for the education community to engage with their credit union class acts. Quickest way to get involved is go to heroesofeducation.org, find a school that you care about, and go ahead and vote with your email or text. Make sure to mention the Heroes for Education because we want every dollar to go to every school possible. It feels so wonderful to be supported and to know that education is important. Teachers and educators truly are heroes that are touching the future. Louisville City playing a number of new faces tonight as they stepped out of USF SL championship play against Chattanooga Red Wolves, you know, it, it was hosting a second round at US Open match against them. Unable to finish several good chances in the opening half. Took advantage of a turnover though in the 75th minute. Corbin Bone ahead to Wilson Harris. And he buries in the left corner, putting Loose City up. One nothing. They nearly added another on the header by Ian Solaire off the set piece. City advances to round three, one nil over Red Wolves. A lot of players got their first minutes uh, tonight. Really proud of, of that. Uh, we talk about, we talk to the group all the time about the importance of everybody in that locker room. And I felt that the guys that uh, got their first starts um, and, and their first minutes, I thought they, they had an excellent game for us. 
Ty Ty Washington moving on from the University of Kentucky. Freshman guard has declared for the NBA draft and will not be returning to UK. He averaged 12 points, four assists, three rebounds a game, was named to the All-SEC second team and was a league freshman of the week five times. He becomes the 31st player in the John Calipari era to declare for the draft after his freshman season. 27 of those previous 30 have been first round picks. Will Levis taking advantage of his opportunities in Kentucky. This is not something that would happen at other schools. The Wildcat quarterback has signed an NIL deal with a horse. Levis tweeted this morning that he's partnering with Claiborne Farm to appear in multimedia campaigns with their horse, War of Will. The 2019 Preakness Stakes winner, now a promising young stallion. Levis said that he and War of Will share, of course, willpower in common. Of course they do. The traditional par three contest on Wednesday of Masters Week cut short because of storms, but not before it produced some fun moments. Jason Kokrak on the 125 yard fourth hole brings it back all the way into the hole for an ace. The really cool thing about this event, not only do you get to celebrate with your playing partners, for many of these guys, their families are there as well. High fives from the kids. Gary Player won his first of over 150 professional golf tournaments right here in Louisville. The 1958 Kentucky Derby Open at Seneca Golf Course. Now 86, the three-time Masters champ, showing he can still swing it. Trying to bring this one back, and it nearly goes in on the first hole. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't quite come back all the way. Family getting involved with some shots as well. This is Oliver Leishman, the son of Mark. Rolls in a nice birdie putt at number two. First tee time for round one tomorrow is 8 a.m. Tiger at 1034. Justin Thomas at 1045. And the Kenny McPeak train smile happy. The 9 to 5 morning line favorite in the field of 12 for Saturday's Bluegrass Stakes at Keeneland. Tom, you got to back me up here on the air. You have your putting green out in honor of the occasion in yes. the sports office. It is ready. We're, yeah, we're going to crack that out, I think, tomorrow during our 6 o'clock newscast. Oh, well, I got it in just two tries today. Two tries? One, one for two is excellent. It, right? I excellent. think so. Yeah. <laughs> Don't challenge him, though, because no. Tom is an expert. No, I'm Tom, not, you, I know better than that. He's got a Any, Justin Thomas-type swing. Anybody can beat me. No, no. no. That's not true. All right, thanks, Tom. All right. All right, Justin Thomas, by the way, second favorite behind John Rahm to win the Masters. Maybe we'll get a local winner, Mark. Uh, maybe. Uh, I will tell you, it was active day down there today, though. Some of wow. those storms, some of the severe storms were around there. That's the same system for us. Brings a couple showers tomorrow. We'll watch for mixed Friday, Saturday. All right, thanks for joining us. Have a great night. At Norton Healthcare, we believe that health is a fundamental human right.